obviously a practical and hands-on session. Um, and so um, we're curious, like what best practices do you guys have? But first, do you have questions for us? Um, <laughs> very good, all right, you in the, yeah, you first, yeah, thanks. So when you had that question, just kind of a question of like clarifying question mm -hmm. for the case where you had the long consultation with the researcher who had very large data from a NASA grant. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're describing, it's like, what did you wind up going with? Because I mean, Zenodo, like the CERN platform, like there are platforms that meet those needs that are like the default for the community. So I don't know yeah. like why did, I know that it was a really complicated data set, but what was that whole many month interaction like? Um, partially scheduling, right? Like, like, hey, can you meet with us next week? Oh, I'm out of town next week. Yeah, let's meet next week. Okay, and we would, we would look at, look at the data. It took, it took, I would say, several months just to, or a couple of those months just to. Um, uh, figure out his data. And I would say probably it, it, it's a little exaggerated because that was like the last meeting with him was in August after he was like, hey, you guys, I presented this at a conference. So I just wanted to check in. Or I actually, what he said was I developed more data and I put it in this thing, right? Yeah, um, but yeah. he, you know, yeah. he's a postdoc and right. he also needed to continue to check in with the people that he answers to because we would ask him questions um, about the project before he had been involved. Right. Um, you know, they had submitted a data management right. plan, so we're like, right. can we see that? Right. <laughs> to see what you right. said you would right. do. Right. Right. So there was a lot of him needing to go out and get information um, from right. others as well. Right. And he, the, thing, the thing that we learned about the NASA um, grant, so the money did come from NASA, um, but it also came from institutions. But there's not, it's not like there's a single climate science portal. What there are, are data's, data repositories for various and sundry projects, right? Like for this, X satellite for blah, blah, blah. And we looked into that and it's complicated. So he looked at Zenodo, ended up putting his stuff in Dataverse similarly, you know, because it's kind of an open general thing um, because of features, because of how they uploaded and diffed his versions. He liked that better. And, uh, sorry? But the software too? The software ended up living someplace else. Well, right? Yeah, yeah, he had a GitHub instance for his software, yeah. Um, yeah, this was all, these were all textual files, so. Just kind of to clarify yeah. then, the, so if he had a, a really complicated data set with a lot of other partners, how did you handle the attribution issues without integrating like the various software versions? So like, because GitHub's not, a, not an archive. No, sure isn't. Um, no. Yeah, it's is that like just still ongoing kind of did the best you like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 yeah. Um, so he was looking more specifically for a place for this particular sets of data that were attached to a publication. They were, they were, they were in fact the documentation for the publication rather than the documentation for the software itself, it was complicated. Uh, but yes, I think the larger philosophical point is we did do the best we could. And um, I am a big believer in the quick but imperfect win. Like, I'm a big believer in like, can we just get you to back your stuff up? <laughs> Please, can we just get you to back it up? Uh, versus like perfect metadata and perfect storage, because frankly, nobody has time for that on our campus. Like, we are lucky if we can get an hour with someone, which is what made this extraordinary. Um, but we, I think, have continued to do um, big yeah. consultations, and like, I'm sure we could have done other stuff, and that, that I think is what we're trying to convey is that we learned from this too. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking to kind of yeah. clarify yeah. because yeah. you mentioned software yeah. preservation at the right. end and building out your own repository. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so I wasn't sure how is that reference long transaction. Yeah, and I think part of it, you know, it came to light uh, from this consultation, other interactions, that best practices around software, it was a conversation that we needed to have more um, right. specifically. And so, and Phoebe mentions, you know, work around the software, you know, that project as well as a couple others around that time and following really have gotten us to, uh, need to investigate that and talk to our colleagues and because we, we aren't supporting that in the best way that we could. Yeah. So other questions? 
I think up here is first. And then Christine, have you considered publishing your bi-weekly RDM update? <laughs> I was warned that this would probably come up. <laughs> I am happy to do so, um, and and uh, figuring out a mechanism by which to do that. Um, yes, uh, that has been something I've been thinking about doing. Because um, yeah, I've been doing it for about two and a half years now, and um, uh, I think it would be beneficial probably <laughs> to other people. Yeah, um, yeah. I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about your instruction program. You said you do instruction. Is that are you invited into departments to do it, or is this more instruction that you are providing on a walk-in registration basis? And and what are exactly are you teaching? Yep. So we do both. Um, you know, I mentioned our sort of cycle of regular instruction, and so um, those are just uh, we do a cycle, uh, a quarterly cycle within the libraries broadly, so that we market our sort of portfolio all at once. Um, so we participate in that, um, and in fact, I'm teaching data management plan and DMP tool next week. Um, as so April is one of our our. Uh, uh, core instruction. Um, but then we're also invited, yes, to go into research groups. Um, so giving data management 101 is often, you know, we're invited um, by uh, either um, a researcher who's like, hey, I heard you guys do stuff. Can you come talk to my group? Um, uh, or uh, just um, it, it, they come to us from many different mechanisms. And, and so that, uh, those often are sort of the data management 101 or the file organization one. I'm partnering actually with um, our digital uh, archivist in, uh, in the archives um, and hopefully the records management person who may be uh, here by then in May um, because we had admins from one of our departments, they have a regular seminar. And they came to us and was like, we have all of these files, what they were calling their data files around grants, um, you know, bio sketches, all these things. And they wanted um, kind of a best practice seminar. And so she and I are, are uh, collaborating on doing something like that. And that was, um, I think they saw our file organization workshop advertised. We're like, hey, can you come and do that? So we do a little bit of both, depending. Yeah, yeah, and so that that group, the admins, it's the admins for it's one of my departments. Oh, so it's 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 the admins for the um, research lab for electronics at MIT. But that's like forty people. Like it's a lot of people. Um, I've taught a couple classes for new grads. This is before our digital humanities librarian joined. For new grad students in one of the humanities departments, which we do have at MIT. Um, they're small but mighty. Um, but but that was an interesting experience because um, you know it's a seminar, right? Fifteen people or so. They're new grad students, and they're concerned. Howard was there with me for the last one, and. Um, they're concerned because um, if you submit an NSF grant for a dissertation, NSF dissertation grants also need data management plans, right? And so that was their hook. They're like, we've got a bunch of people on NSF dissertation fellowships, like, um, can you talk to them about their data management plans? And then that turned into a discussion about like how to deal with private information in the social sciences, which again is this like big ball of, a uh, <laughs> big can of worms that um, we talked to but did not resolve. Um, but, but yeah, so they come in, and then our, our, our walk-in classes, like Christine said, we just do registration through the normal library instruction portal. So we're also teaching like Mendeley and how to do bibliographic searching and all the usual stuff. So um, yeah, uh, Kristen. Um, so you mentioned that you keep track of your interactions in the wiki. Um, have you looked at, at the risk of having things thrown at me, a ticketing system or something like that, or working with IT and what they use? Yeah. Yeah, so we actually use an RT system for other parts of the libraries, um, in, including our group that does, like, handles the citation management tools, questions, but also Ask Us is RT. Yeah, we use a, we use a ticketing system for our reference questions, too. Um, unlike a lot of libraries, all our, all our reference is electronic, and we write all through a ticketing system, so. Um, yeah, as to uh, why we haven't taken that dive with data management services, um, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> well, it, I think that they would do two separate things. So I think a ticketing system would be useful because we could keep track of the interactions between the person and the um, the person and the person answering them. So. Um, I mentioned that our email address is a list day management at MIT goes to all of us. Um, 
but often we will take that offline by having the screener like just reply to the person at a certain point. So a ticketing system would help with that. I think we probably haven't done it just because it's not, the volume of questions hasn't been totally overwhelming. The wiki is slightly different though. What the wiki does is it's, it's a log, but it's not just a log. Like we had notes there, right? Like we're like, here's the text of the email that this person sent me and here's like a link to their data management plan that I uploaded with my comments, right? And here's like, here's the other wiki page that I started for this like consultation where we like added notes of all the things we're gonna tell him. And so, so like there's a lot of editing and text and it's just pretty free form. Um, so, um, yeah. Right, how are you guys, thank you for this, um, working to position these services thinking with key administrative units or systems. Proposal Development Research Administration or your Grants Administration System, you guys are coeus. Right, so, so say more. What do you mean by positioning? Where are we? In terms of, um, you know, you're offering workshops and liaisons okay. are doing outreach around right. these services and, right. you know, you're hoping that departments take you up on that or individuals take you up on that. Do you have anyone from the top incentivizing researchers or saying to those researchers, hey, the library's got these things to offer. You might, you might look at them, or even looking at systems and how you build triggers into those systems to alert researchers that right. these services are available. Yeah, that's, that's definitely an area that we are uh, wanting to dive deeper in. I can speak, you know, for OSP, for example, you know, Office has uh, sponsored sponsor programs. Um, you know, when we, in terms of data management plans, and we took the advantage of when we um, we're customizing the DMP tool to really engage them in that early and have them take a look at it and figure out how we could get that linked on their website and linking out to that, you know, and so that was a minimal type of thing. Um, with the campus network project that we mentioned at the end, you know, we have the project team involves people from, um, from Office of uh, Sponsored Programs, as well as the Office of General Counsel has a research data group um, that uh, I'm a part of, as well as other people, and ISNT as well. So we're, we're starting conversations of, of creating more robust referrals across campus to each other, it, but that's sort of just being launched, that effort. So do you have anything more to add with that, Howard? Um. Yeah, the, uh, uh, well, one, I'm really excited that we're finally launching this project. It's, uh, um, uh, there is, a, you know, it's a decentralized environment, right? So that, um, uh, uh, so that it, it's, uh, it's not the kind of place where, uh, where senior leadership would even consider sort of mandates or, or that, that sort of approach. Or it, and uh, uh, so, so this is a more um, organic, uh, and partly driven by uh, the faculty needs studies and conversations that we've had to sort of make a uh, sort of more uh, community-based argument for, for bringing these things together. And you just remind me, so uh, the, the Office of General Counsel group um, has worked, or I want to say last year and a half, on, you know, we don't necessarily uh, do mandates, but uh, best uh, research data management principles. Um, and the VP of research, there's like drafts going out in terms of setting that out into the world, which I think we're pretty close to doing. And so that was something that grew out of the, the OGC sort of group um, that hopefully, you know, again, is, is probably as close as we're gonna get to any sort of mandates. But. Yeah. yeah, and I'll just, I'll add, I'll second all this stuff and say that when you mentioned we're a decentralized campus, which is very true, like people don't like centralized systems particularly, like we often have departmental uh, IT, for instance, uh, on our campus. And um, um, we also have the Office of Research Management has departmental liaisons, and so I think one thing that we could do is work more with those people, but like, we're also excited about working with the admins, because they like touch things from the other side, you know, as, as documents are being put together, and so there's a lot of like, I think there's a lot of angles we could go at this from. There's not one central system that's gonna catch everyone. So, you know, like our consultation with the long-term grant, he was trying to wrap up a grant that had been long done, you know? So there was like, Office of Research wasn't touching it. This was all just him being self-motivated. So, um, yeah, in the back. I have two questions. One is yeah. very brief. Are you involved in any research compliance training? Are you 
included in that sort of a program for the campus? Uh, so the training that, um, the, the short answer is no, <laughs> um, because that's uh, it's <coughs> a online system and we are not tapped into that whole yeah. process. So unfortunately not. I mean, often that's like a great opportunity to engage, but no. Yeah. Don't, don't they buy it at MIT? They just yes, sort of wholesale it's it's outsource their, their so, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the other question is, how do you interface with ITS on campus? And you mentioned that there are departmental ITS programs, and I'm, I'm curious, don't, do they sort of feel like you're moving in their space a little bit? And, um, or, not, or, you know, I can think of, uh, not so much. I, so our ISNT, our central uh, centralized ISNT, they've been going through their own evolution as well. So um, I think uh, you know the Lab Archives project was a great example of they reached out to us and said, "Hey, you know, sort of after the fact that they had already said we're going to do this three-year enterprise license, which we don't need to get into that, but um, they wanted our input in sort of the implementation of it and. Through that, it was you know I was involved with that project, and you know our concepts of what archives mean and all sorts of things came to light. And so, that along with other projects have um, created a nice conversation with ISNT. Um, as far as departmental uh, IT groups, I can think of our one of our. Um, uh, that's a little bit more uneven in terms of engagement. A lot of times it's from historical relationships with liaisons, for example. Um, so one in particular, you know, uh, I'm thinking of Jay Powell in particular. Um, and they, uh, you know, a lot of his people come to him about where to put their data and he automatically kind of knee jerk uh, refers them to us. But for that one happening, how many others we don't have that system up. So that's an area we could definitely kind of shore up with the help probably of, of our liaisons who are the ones that know that these, where these people are and how they work in their departments, but yeah. I mean, I would, I would say in practice, and I don't think this has been, wasn't decreed and it's a plan, but it's just sort of evolved. Um, our IT, our central IT, tends to do the things that I would think of as active data management uh, support. So uh, they run our institutional Dropbox, for instance. They um, run a bank of computing servers that people can get server time, rack time on to run experiments. They um, bought lab archives. So, so um, and they tend to run the computing infrastructure of like, you know, you need some cluster time, you need, you know, you need a shell to do something like, here you go. Um, they don't really touch storage and whatnot so much. And the other, I think, again, the more general point is we know that this is just barely the tip of the iceberg, right? Just barely the tip of the iceberg because there's so much research happening, I mean, on every campus, but there's so much research happening on, on our campus. Um, and so many people do research. Our undergraduates do research. Like our undergraduates do full on research projects and publish papers, right? Um, our grad students publish papers. Our postdocs publish papers. Our research scientists publish papers. We have more research scientists and postdocs than undergraduate students on our campus. And they are all doing research. And um, most of it is data intensive research <laughs> of one kind or another. And so, um, I, I think that we're exploring these services, but. But um, but we know that we know that there's a lot we could do in, in almost every area, and the same is true for IT. Frankly, like like there's a lot they could do that they don't do. Um, so when departments spin up their own IT support, it's often because um, they want something specialized or they do something specialized, and you know there's a very much a culture at MIT of like. We build it, like, like, yeah. Uh, we're not gonna, you know, you need a server, I'm gonna build you a server uh, kind of culture. Um, so, um, yeah, all this stuff is just springing up all over and we're, uh, you know, I don't think we've even tried to keep track of it, much less serve it all, so. Um, yeah, anything else? Uh, in the front, either one of you guys? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. I was wondering, how do you resolve questions or concerns from researchers that they want to be contacted before anyone else uses their data, especially when, uh, especially when they're required to put their data uh, openly without right. like having any sort of requirements attached to it? Do you think of any instance where we've had that? Um, 
Um, so we don't get a ton of that partially because remember we're not, we don't have a medical school, so we don't do a lot of clinical data. We don't do any clinical data really. Um, and uh, we have um, sociology stuff, which I feel like is the other big area, and we tend to refer those folks to ICPSR to put their data, and like ICPSR handles the contact me part. Um, for other data sets, it tends to, I mean, maybe Howard has thoughts, but um, what the cases I remember have all just been straight open, open, open stuff. I mean, it's the kind of thing that they would be putting on their personal website otherwise, right? Like either we help them find a repository or they like throw a link up on their website and then the grad student who's maintained the website leaves and <laughs> you know, but. The advantage of yeah. MIT OA culture is pretty strong. Yeah. And so we're lucky that way. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, I think that people are broadly concerned about that. We have not touched that. And so for, for instance, this data that we're talking about, that we just talked about, um, you would have to have a PhD and also like experience in the project to even know that it was climate data, right? Like it's that kind of a project. Um, so, um, so we haven't touched it, but, um, but certainly there's broader there talk in the community, yeah. Yeah, yeah, have, have you or has anyone else had, had that? Yeah. Can you have the experience where people aren't sure they want to share their data yet or at all just in case they're scooped or they don't want to go through, like the data is very intricately linked to software that they don't want to be responsible for maintaining? And so then you get someone who doesn't want to share it openly because they feel like they're going to, it, the whole idea is someone will reuse this and they'll want my support in reusing this and this isn't something I want to maintain anymore. And so we've kind of just encouraged them to put open licenses on it and have like stipulations for the, for what kind of support you could expect or what, um, you know, what attribution they prefer and things like that, but you can't, I, uh, I have, really step back from saying, oh, we'll find a way for you to hide it. <laughs> I don't think that that's necessarily the best thing for science. And if you can be honest with them about it, it goes a long way. Like, you can point them towards, re towards resources, but I kind of step away from supporting that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, question, the question of disciplinary cultures, that is very real. I mean, we certainly have disciplines that don't particularly share their stuff. Uh, you know, I work with engineering. I'm an engineering librarian. Um, engineering historically has not been very open. Like there's not a ton of open access journals uh, and people don't really put their data out. And uh, why, I don't know. But, 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 but that's the culture. And um, so we, we definitely get grad students whose PI doesn't really support them in putting their data out. Or they might say like, yeah, um, I will say, actually, as I'm talking, the instance that we do deal with has come to me, which is um, the PI got a grant, but the grant wasn't from the government, it was from Ford or from like a private company of some kind. And they're like, you know, what's the return on investment for that money, right? Ford expects to get the data first. Um, so, um, so there's a real tricky funding pipeline there um, with a lot of our research um, because we do tons of private partnerships. and. Um, um, separating, make, helping PIs separate that out and like figuring out what data goes with what is a thing that we deal with. And I don't have wonderful answers on how to do that, but just knowing that it's a concern is important. Um, in the front, yeah. yeah you mentioned um, interviewing faculty to find out about their needs. and So that interests me, like how did you go about setting that up? And what sort of information came out of that? Do you want to take lead on that one? Sure, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, was a, that was a project that I was uh, 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 about a year ago. And, uh, and it was actually driven by a, um, uh, a faculty member who wanted uh, the libraries to uh, take a much more active role in organizing um, uh, research data management on campus, right? And he thought that the libraries were the people who could bring people together. And out of that um, uh, came an effort to, um, uh, to actually uh, have conversations of faculty speaking to each other about their data. So it wasn't, uh, they, the interviews weren't, um, what can we do for you, right? It, it wasn't even 
uh, it wasn't even focused necessarily on our problems. It was just talk about your data, what you do, and these were small meetings. We got like um, uh, you know about ten faculty in all, you know groups of three or four uh, to talk about it, and they were cross university, so they were very interesting conversations. We took notes, and out of that summarized um, you know kind of common themes, which were there we should invest effort in creating a campus network that, uh, that we're sort of doing now. It took about a year to kind of get those wheels turning. And, uh, and, and that faculty input helped um, uh, provide enough um, uh, impetus for the VP for research and is &T to, in principle, join the libraries and supporting this activity. So, so it was kind of using the faculty feedback uh, to um, uh, get senior administrative support to, to sort of bless the efforts to um, uh, cooperate. We also, yeah. uh, was it after that we interviewed individual faculty? Or before, I can't remember, but. There were, there were individual interviews for the people who we couldn't, you know, getting, right. getting four people in a room was a logistical right. um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 phenomenally complicated. So, so there were a few people that we just uh, picked up afterwards in individual interviews because they uh, they wanted to talk but they couldn't uh, find. You know, we couldn't get. And just anecdotally, I sat in on one of those individual interviews. It was with one of my computer science faculty, and and um, it was kind of extraordinary because. Well, the data he works with is um, super complicated because it actually he does work with hospitals on clinical data because they're building software for hospitals, and so and and so like he talked about like how that pipeline was totally locked down, and he had to physically go to the hospital because all their stuff was on servers that were physically in the building because the internet was not secure enough, right? Like, so he talked about that, but he also talked about his servers, and like there's all these I think practical real world problems that arise that we don't, I wouldn't even think about. He was like, I said, you know, it's your code, where's your code? Is it on GitHub? He's like, no, it's on the server that lives under my desk. And I'm like, why is it on a server that lives under your desk? And he's like, well, because I have the grad students maintain it. And I'm like, well, the grad students can put it on GitHub. And he's like, well, except that, you know, GitHub uses Git and I like CVS. I've used CVS for a long time. And I was like, Really? Um, and, and, and he's like, but you know, it's complicated because the grad students don't learn CBS anymore. They learn all this other stuff. And, and then they had to like build scripts to convert. Anyway, it just went on and on and on like that. And I feel like every lab is like that, right? Like it's just this infinitely branching, complicated scenario for every, every, every uh, investigator and their students. So um, again, day management is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Oh, it's actually just going to add yeah, to the conversation. Yeah. Is, um, so we're doing interviews with uh, lab researchers as well, and I think you're right. It's really fascinating to see what's really happening internally right. in the labs. Um, we have less, they seem to care less about the management issue. Okay. Because we have lab archives, we do have lab archives, and mm -hmm. I only can speak to the medical side of campus. Mm -hmm. But it, the, the PI kind of dictates how that data is being um, organized and, and recorded, and many of them were just like, nah, you know, we're not, this isn't, we don't want it. Sure. So it's not getting used on our side of campus. It may be used on the other side of campus, I'm not sure. Um, what we're finding is the real interest with um, data on our campus is data analysis tools. Mm -hmm. So they're really interested in us looking at Glucor and Metacor and IPA, and what can we do to provide them with that kind of resources and that sort of training and training in R for a lot of the analysis. So I don't know. With us, data management has become, we, we were all geared up to kind of work in that area, mm -hmm. and that seems to have fallen flat on the medical side of campus. Mm -hmm. And now it's the data analysis piece that seems to be of more interest. Mm -hmm. We might be able to find a niche. So it's interesting where you can find a place to help support their needs, and, and those interviews are really helpful in finding out what's going on and what they care about. Yeah, absolutely. And we teach um, we teach R, right? That's been in those classes. Yeah. So not out of our group, but in a slightly adjacent group. We actually bring people in to teach R. Um, we can offer enough of those R classes. R yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have library workshop. But yeah, it's um, our, actually our GS librarian is also the statistics librarian. Is that OK? So um, yeah, we have a partnership with them. So.
but yes, we can't, I think, again, we can't offer enough of those classes. Everyone wants them. And on the non-medical side of the house, too, like, you know, all of our chemists and life science researchers and everybody, just everyone has to do stats. Everyone has to use computers. Everyone has to do stats. Everyone, like, has, you know, runs analysis on some set of data. And so I think supporting, supporting that is, is super useful. So 